my god. Jesus Christ, that go right there. That's huge. I've oh never seen god. alien cross beds before. That's actually gigantic. Holy <laughs> Today, I'm at Red Rock Canyon, but I'm not here alone. I'm with the groovy geologist. Are you seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> this place is famous for its striking red rocks, but a lot of people don't know that these rocks tell a 300 million year story of shifting seas, towering sand dunes, and even in some areas, have evidence of ancient dinosaurs and some of the earliest mammals on Earth. So let's dive in to the geologic history of Red Rock Canyon. During the late Paleozoic era, over 300 million years ago, this region was covered by an ancient shallow sea. This ancient sea was home to all kinds of marine life. And over time, over millions of years, their shells and skeletons became preserved in thick layers of limestone, which is all the gray layers you can see in the mountains behind the sandstone that we're in. Fast forward to the very end of the Paleozoic era, around 250 million years ago, the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea led to the regression of shallow continental seas. In other words, these shallow seas disappeared. Because the smashing together of all the continents to form Pangaea led to thicker continental crust and higher elevations, which essentially just pushed all the seas off of the land surface. And tectonic uplift associated with the formation of Pangaea caused these limestones to get tilted, which is why some of these layers are sitting at weird angles today. This began the transition of this ancient seafloor into a massive arid desert. And all of these red cliffs are part of the Aztec sandstone formation, which represent huge sand dunes that formed during the Jurassic period nearly 200 million years ago. Over time, these dunes got buried, compacted, and cemented together, forming the rocks we see today. And preserved in some of these rocks are even some dinosaur tracks, as well as some other small animal tracks from proto-mammals or very early mammals, and even arachnids, some tracks from literally like spider ancestors <laughs> found here, which is so cool. Kate and I went looking for these tracks, but unfortunately did not find them. So I'm sorry that won't be in the video. I think they keep the track sites a little bit secretive because I think they're still studying them and they don't want too much human impact. But anyway, let's get back to these amazing dune deposits and what we can tell by looking at their structures. These sand dunes preserved these amazing cross beds in their structures. You can see these lines in the rocks and the outcrop here that kind of cross each other. These are called cross bedding features or cross bed structures. Oh, look at that one right there. But those are formed when sand dunes form. And I'll put a diagram up on the screen so you understand kind of the mechanism of it. But the sand grains fly over, are carried over with wind to the front side of the dune where it then deposits. And as it does that over time, these cross beds form. And from that, you can actually get the wind direction. You can figure out what the wind direction here was 200 million years ago, nearly 200 million years ago when these dunes were deposited, which is just so cool. But why are these rocks so red? Well, this is essentially just rust. The iron in these rocks reacted with oxygen over time as groundwater flowed through these rocks that contained oxygen and it oxidized the iron in these rocks. In some regions, there's some regions where it just leached out the iron, it dissolved it and leached it out, which is why some of the sandstone here is more of a tan color and some of it is this beautiful bright red. Here's a really good view of some cross beds here. You can see the straight lines here and how the cross beds just angle down like this. And the other thing you can see here are these concentrated red dots. Those are iron concretions where iron has, while the water, the subsurface water leached through and went through these rocks, iron was leached out of the rocks and concentrated in certain areas forming these concretions. And I actually have a whole video about rock concretions and all sorts of rock ball formations. <laughs> so I'll link that below if you're interested. Fast forwarding again to around 70 million years ago at the very end of the Mesozoic era, a massive mountain building event called the Laramide Orogeny 
began altering the landscape, causing layers of rocks to get thrusted over one another. And what's crazy is that this actually flipped the order of the rock layers. The older Paleozoic limestone ended up on top of younger Jurassic sandstone. This is something you can read about in the Roadside Geology book for this area. I highly recommend. It really goes through and shows you on the geologic maps in this book, how the fault is, where the fault is, and where you drive by it, and what rocks represent it, and how it formed, and all of these things. So highly recommend those books. But anyway, after all that mountain building, erosion took over, sculpting the beautiful valleys, cliffs, and canyons that we see here today. So from ancient seas that eventually dried up to towering dunes that eventually got compacted and formed into rocks to tectonic forces that finally uplifted these rocks and erosion that led to the exposures we see today, this place has become over 300 million years of Earth history what it is today, Red Rock Canyon. Thanks for watching this video about the geologic history of Red Rock Canyon. Make sure to check out Kate, the Groovy Geologist channels on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. We found a waterfall in, it's hard to point to from this angle, <laughs> in the middle of the desert. Love that. The water is so clear. That's so cool. We just follow the sounds to get here. Yeah, so we just followed the water sound, lines. which we didn't expect. <laughs> Some more amazing crossbeds in this layer. You can see these here. And I'm going to come up close to it to show scale with my hand. It's huge, this outcrop. And you can see these crossbeds actually have stripes of red in them. And the stripes of red are so interesting because actually, I was just reading my handy dandy Roadside Geology Nevada book, and they say that the red color, because it's due to the iron concentration as water, oxidized water, flowed through these rocks, oxidizing the iron, it concentrated it in certain regions. And it actually concentrated it sometimes along these cross beds because they were plains where water could flow more easily or kind of surfaces where it started to settle. So it concentrated along the cross beds, the iron, the oxidized deposits of iron, which I just think is so cool. And that's why you can see these stripes in the layers sometimes, when in reality, the layers were all deposited at the same time with the same composition, and it changed later on as the iron became moved and oxidized. And here's a quick sneak peek of some of what's to come in the next few weeks for my content. Spoiler alert, Kate and I got to meet up with Seismocam as we headed west from Red Rock to Death Valley and some other locations. So stay tuned in the coming weeks. Those videos will be coming out on all of our channels. So make sure to keep up on all the channels and the platforms. And now Kate and I have traveled to Death Valley where there are sand dunes here that represent the modern equivalent of what we saw in Red Rock, which is so cool. These dunes might actually look kind of similar to how the Red Rock dunes looked when they formed, before they got buried, solidified, and oxidized to turn red. And if you take a cross-section cut of one of these dunes, you would see the similar cross bedding that we saw in Red Rock. It just wouldn't be solidified, so it would all fall apart. But if it was solidified right now and we cut into it, we would see those cross beds, which is just so cool.